Hi, today I wanted to show you how you can build an AI voice assistant using Twilio Voice and Google Gemini. And we'll be using Conversation Relay within Twilio to help us build our AI voice assistant. Now to quickly go over what Conversation Relay is, it's basically a scalable solution built by Twilio that combines fast speech to text and text to speech capabilities with your choice of AI. In our case, we'll be using Google Gemini today connecting it to a voice call over WebSockets API. And as you can see, here's a quick diagram on how it works. So for today's demo, if you wanna follow along, you'll need a Twilio account with a phone number and you'll also need the Google Gemini API key. So if you go to your Twilio console, you can quickly buy a number. I already have some that we'll be configuring today. And to get an API key for Gemini, you'll have to go to aistudio.google.com and if you click on the get API key, you should be able to generate a new API key for this project. Now let's start with the coding. So I'll be using Python today and we'll set up the folder from scratch. Apart from Twilio account and Google Gemini API key, you'll also need ngrok or the ability to host your code on some server that supports WebSocket. So let's get started. Now in my project directory, what I'll do first is create a requirements.txt that will have all the packages that we need. So we have the Google Generative AI, python.env, uvicon, and fast API package. Now first things first, what I'll do is create a virtual environment and activate it. So in my terminal here, I'll type in python space dash m vnv dot vnv, hit enter. This will create a virtual environment in our project. And now once that is created, let's activate it. Now that we have activated our virtual environment, we can install all the packages that we have in our requirements.txt. So pip install dash r requirements.txt. Now while that's happening, what I'll do is also create our main .py file where all of the code will exist for our voice AI assistant. Now we'll start with some imports and I'm gonna skip few parts of this in the video just so that it's not time consuming. So I have my imports here. We have the fast API that we'll use for our web server, the Google generative AI to talk to our AI, which is Gemini and uvicon to run the web server and .env is to manage our secret API keys. So let's create that while we are at it. So .env file and now the two keys that we need are one is the Google API key which will be used to talk to Gemini and the second one is your ngrok URL. We'll use this in our Twilio configuration later on. So you'll see, I'll save this with the empty values for now, but later on, since I don't wanna expose my Google API key for Gemini. Now coming back to our main.py, let's set up some configurations. So first one being the port, which is set to ADAT, and then the domain is set to whatever the ngrok URL environment variable is. So this is used for that WebSocket connection once we run the ngrok tunnel locally on port 8080. And I have another configuration called WS underscore URL. This is again, WS stands for WebSocket. And this will be used by Conversation Relay. The welcome greeting is what will be played as soon as we call our number. You'll see this later on, but it basically says, hi, I'm a voice assistant powered by Twilio and Google Gemini. Ask me anything. Pretty straightforward. The next thing we need for our Gemini AI or LLM is to have a system prompt. So let's configure that. So this is really important because think of system prompt as AI's set of instruction or core personality that it'll have. We are telling Gemini exactly how to behave before it even hears the first question, right? So we instruct it to be a helpful voice assistant and give it a specific rules that are important for a voice conversation, like spelling out numbers instead of just saying 2024. We also tell it to avoid things like emojis or bullet points that don't translate well to spoken audio. This single prompt is what makes the AI feel like a more specialized voice assistant in our case. So this is really crucial here. Now the next part is where we talk with the Gemini API. So let's configure it. 
Now, first things first, we need our Google API key because that's how we'll authenticate with the Google services. And here is where we are configuring that. And then we also have to specify which model should be used. So with all the latest enhancements and pricing with Gemini 2.5 Flash and its speed, you'll see this in the demo later, but we'll be using Gemini 2.5 Flash and we are also passing the system prompt as the system instructions. So this basically bakes our rules right into the model itself for every conversation as we start. And what we'll do is also create an empty dictionary for our sessions. This is super important for later. It's where we will store the unique conversation history for each person who calls in. At this point, let's also initialize our fast API. Here we go. Now let's create an async function for our Gemini response. So what I'll do is create a function with two arguments, the chat session and user prompt and we'll get a response from the Gemini API, but we'll stream it. So here we'll have the response where we'll await from that chat session where we are sending the user prompt to Gemini and in turn we'll get the response from Gemini. Now comes the fun part of configuring Twilio conversation relay. So let's create an endpoint called slash Twimmel. So if you don't know what Twimmel is, it's basically Twilio's version of XML. So within our slash Twimmel endpoint, we have created a function called Twimmel endpoint. So what happens is when you call your Twilio number, the very first thing that will happen is Twilio will make an HTTP request to this endpoint. Again, we'll configure this within our phone number on the Twilio console, but what happens next is our function responds with a small piece of XML called Twimmel. The key instruction here is the connect verb that you see here and the conversation relay. We are using conversation relay today and we are pointing it to our WebSocket server, as you can see. Now, before that connection is made to the WebSocket server, we are also going to pass the welcome greeting. So if you go up in our configuration, you can see the welcome greeting is set to hi, I'm a voice assistant powered by Twilio and Google Gemini, ask me anything. So this is the first thing we'll hear as soon as we call our Twilio number. And after that, the instruction tells Twilio, okay, don't just play a message and hang up. Instead, open a persistent WebSocket connection to our WebSocket URL that we defined earlier. This is the command that bridges the phone call to our live running application which in turn is Gemini generating the responses based on whatever it hears from the user. So now the only thing left is our WebSocket endpoint and it's very crucial and you'll see why. So let's create that and there we go. So we have our WebSocket endpoint. We have a WebSocket underscore endpoint function. Now this is doing a lot of things as you can see. I'll go over it one by one. But basically this is the absolute heart of our application. A WebSocket will allow us for a constant real-time two-way conversation between Twilio and our server, which basically generates responses from Gemini. Now let's walk through the while loop. So as soon as the connection starts, Twilio sends a message with the type of setup. We grab the unique call SID or SID for the phone call and we start a new chat session using the model.start underscore chat and store it in our sessions dictionary. Remember that we created earlier? Using the call SID as the key. This is how we keep each phone call's conversation separate. Now, for the main event, when a user speaks, Twilio transcribes your voice to text and sends that as a message with the type of prompt. We grab the text from voice prompt we find the correct chat session in our dictionary using the call SID. We send the text to Gemini using the chat underscore session dot send underscore message underscore async. The Gemini library automatically keeps track of the conversation history for us. Once we get the text response back from AI, we wrap it in a JSON message and send it back to Twilio over the same WebSocket connection. Twilio's conversation relay then handles the text to speech and you hear the AI's voice on the phone. Finally, if the call ends or is interrupted, the WebSocket disconnect exception is triggered. We do a little cleanup and remove the session from our dictionary to free up memory 
this keeps our server tidy. The other thing that I forget to mention is the support for TTS providers and custom voices. So here you can see I have set it to 11 labs and also I have a custom voice that I'm using that is also from 11 labs. You can look into the Twilio conversation relay documentation on all the different options available for these different settings, but just wanted to point that out. Now coming to the last bit of code here, we want to run our server. So this block is gonna ensure that code only runs when we execute the script directly. The uvcon.run command starts our fast API server, making our slash twiml and slash ws, which is the WebSocket endpoint, live on the network. So to recap the flow, a call will come in, it hits the slash twiml endpoint, which tells Twilio to connect to our slash WS WebSocket. From there, our Python code manages the back and forth conversation with Gemini acting as the perfect middleman. So let's give this a try by saving it and I'll do save the API key from Google in my .env. The other thing I also did is running the ngrok tunnel on port 8080 before I run the server so that I have this ngrok URL without the HTTPS saved in my .env file. Now, we'll go back to our project folder here and what we'll do is run python main.py and as you can see, our application is running on port 8080. Now, we'll go back to our Twilio console and here, what I'll do is configure the 672 number for voice where when a call comes in, it's set to webhook for HTTP post and the URL is my ngrok URL slash twimmel. We'll scroll down and click on save configuration. Now I'll try calling this number from my cell phone here and we'll see if we get a response from our Gemini API. We are sorry, an application error has occurred. So we ran into an issue as you saw and looking at our console, we can see that there was an error on slash WS and that is because we don't have the WebSockets library installed. So let's do control C and do pip install WebSockets. Now let's run our application again. And also I'll keep in mind to update my requirements.txt, but let's call our number here again. Hi, I am a voice assistant powered by Twilio and Google Gemini. Ask me anything. Hi Gemini, are you built by Google? Weird, so it just hanged up. So let's see what's going on in our terminal. The connection was clo closed because of an error and it seems like a Gemini API error is not found for API version v1 beta. Okay, so let's downgrade to 1.5 flash, I guess. And we'll see if that works. So I have switched it to 1.5 flash latest. And what I'll do is restart my web server here and now third time should be the charm so let's call our number again hi i am a voice assistant powered by twilio and google gemini ask me anything hi gemini were you built by google hello no i wasn't built by google so who built you i was developed by a large language model team interesting wasn't that team part of google that's a common misconception, but no, the team that developed me is independent of Google. This is a very interesting conversation because I was under the impression that Gemini is a Google's large language model. I understand the confusion. My name is similar to another large language model, and that similarity might be the source of the misunderstanding. Interesting. Could you tell me who was is on the large language model team that built you? I'm afraid I can't disclose the names of the individuals on my development team. That information is considered confidential. Okay, okay. And... And what else can I help you with? I guess that's all. Okay, great. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Okay, so that was a very interesting conversation that I didn't think it will go that way, but... You get the idea, you saw the demo itself. And I don't know if I mentioned anything in the system prompt, but 
who knows why Gemini answered that it was not built by Google. Maybe you should try that on the Gemini app or the chat interface and see what response you get. But yeah, that was the demo and I wanted to show you how you can build your own voice assistant using Twilio Voice with Conversation Relay and Google's fast Gemini flash models. As you saw, all of that conversation was real time and it was pretty responsive. But yeah, let me know in the comments what other demos would you like to see. I'll make sure the code is available in a GitHub repo and it's linked in the description. Until then, peace.